What's up? Mr. Myas is here, and I am talking to you today. Uh, <laughs> I am talking to you today about sampling and sample distribution. So the difference between what a sample is and a sampling distribution. Very, very important distinction between the two. And so I'm about to tell you what the difference is. So let's talk about first. Let's talk about a sample. So. So I'm going to go out, let's suppose I want to know, you know, I want to know what percentage of people are awesome. So I find out that um, in the real world, real world, 30% of people, 30% of the population is, are awesome. Who knew, right? 30%. Awesome. So uh, that is a, that's a proportion, P equals 30%, and that we call a uh, Sorry, getting stuck here. Parameter, man, brain fried here or something. So my parameter, P equals 0 0.30. These are the amount of people, the 30% of the people in our population are awesome, all right? So 30% are awesome, but uh, you know, I can't go and take a census and like take, you know, the entire amount of people that are awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a sample I'm going to take a sample of 100 people and I'm going to know, I'm going to want to know, you know, I'm going to take a sample. I'm going to go, okay, that person's awesome. That person's awesome. That person's awesome. Not in the highest measure awesomeness, but you know, they're either awesome or not. Right? So what I find out is uh, I get a, a proportion, a percentage of those people in my sample, 100 people sample that are awesome. It turns out that after I do that one sample, I find out that there are about 25 people, that 25% of those 100, 25% are awesome. So, you know, this is our population percentage, our true proportion, but our sample proportion for one sample is what we call P hat. So very, very scientific here, guys, P hat, okay? So P hat is our sample proportion. That turns out to be 0.25 because I just said there's 25% of those people in my sample in my sample are awesome. So what happens now? Well, um, that's the difference. That's at least this is a sample, right? A sample proportion, 25. Well, you know, that's not exactly what the true proportion is. So maybe I take another sample. I go out and take another random sample of 100. And that, uh, I would say that's, that's P1 hat and P2 hat. Okay, I'll take another sample, and this time I get 19. And then I take another sample, and I get 32. And I'm going to take another sample, and I'm going to keep sampling. I'm going to sample another 100, and then another 100, and then another 100. Then I'm going to take another 100, and another 100, another 100, another 100. Okay, so I'm sampling a bunch of samples. And that is what I'm going to have a sampling distribution. So let me, let me show you kind of how, what happens here. Um, first of all, each of those samples, we want to make sure we do it right, right? We want to make sure our samples are correctly gathered. So what are the, some things that we need to make sure that we do when we gather a sample? So the first thing is, so I'm going to call these right here. I'm going to call these the conditions. These are my conditions, my conditions for having a sampling distribution. All right. So my first condition is that what do I need to do to make sure that my rant, my sample I almost messed it up there that my sample is taken correctly I have no bias I have very limited bias. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to randomize. Okay. So I'm going to take a random sample. So I need to make sure that each of my samples, each of my samples that give me my sampling, my sample sorry each of these p hats that I get each of these sample proportions are taken from samples that were randomly selected. So, okay, so now what's the second thing that has to happen? Well, you know, I want to have this balance of making sure that I have enough people in my sample. Remember, if you saw my, my pie video, right, uh, my, making sure I have enough of a sample to, to have a good representation of the pie, uh, the number of the type of people in my population, and I also don't want to have too big of a sample, and I'll explain to you in, in just a second why. So let me first talk about um, enough people in my sample. So I want to make sure I have a large enough sample size. Now, how do I know if I have a large enough sample size? Well, it turns out that if the number of successes, the people that are awesome, and the number of failures, the people that are not awesome, 
If those, if those total numbers are larger than 10 each, then I'm going to have enough in my sample. Um, you know, if, if the percentage of, if this, oh, let me just say that, okay. So um, that is called, and I'm going to do number three, this is called success failure. So this is my success failure condition, it's NP needs to be greater than 10, and NQ needs to be greater than 10. Basically I'm saying that my successes and my failures are large enough that my sample size is a good enough, large enough sample to be representative of the population. All right, now second, I have a large enough sample size, but also I don't want to have too big of a sample size. Because if I have too big of a sample size, then that sample that I take out of that population is no longer independent when I pull these people out. Um, I'm taking too much of the sample, we're gonna have to use something else. So in order to do this, a sampling distribution, we're going to have our second condition, which is the 10% condition. Basically, this says that I need to have less than 10% of the population in my sample. So as long as my sample is small enough that it's less than, uh, you know, less than 10% of my entire population and it's big enough that my NP and NQ are greater than 10, then I'm going to have a really nice sampling distribution. So here's what it looks like. Here's what happens. Let's think about this. I am, you know, I, I have, uh, I'm going to go take a sample of 100 people and I'm going to say, I'm going to see how many, what percentage of those people are awesome. And that percentage is my P hat, right? So I'm taking one sample and that is there. I take another, and let's say, let's say 30% here, 25, 20, 35. Forty. Okay, it's pretty weird that more than forty people are are awesome. Okay, more more than forty percent of people are awesome. So uh, maybe the first time I take my sample, I have uh, twenty. I forgot what I had up here. I think I have twenty five. Right. So maybe my first p hat is there. My second p hat was nineteen. Right there. Maybe I take another sample of hundred. Maybe my next p hat is right there. Maybe I take another sample of 300, and my next P hat's right here. And I keep taking samples of P, P hats. I keep taking samples of 100. Take another sample, another sample. And each time I take a sample, I, found out the, I find the proportion of people that are awesome. That proportion of people that are awesome, that is called a statistic, right? That is the value that we are considering to sum up the information of that sample. In this case, it's a categorical variable. We're either having they're awesome or they're not awesome. So that categorical variable can be, can be turned into the statistic of a proportion. Now I'm taking each of those proportions of each of those samples and I'm throwing them up, you know, uh, up here and I'm gathering like piles of proportions. So I, I have all these uh, P hats here, you know, and, and they keep going and they keep going and they, and they kind of pile up. You think about just dropping a bunch of P hats all the piats are like falling and they're falling like that. And what happens when, when you know you have a bunch of things that fall like that? They start to they start to pile up, right? And they start to pile up. You know, and they start to pile up and they start to pile up and they start to look like, like a pile. And a pile like this is called a normal model. Yeah, it turns out that if we take those piles, the proportions, the proportions, and we pile them up, we take the proportions and we just keep stacking and we keep putting them together and we take each proportion from those samples, we get a sampling distribution. A sampling distribution because it's a distribution of all the samples that I was taking. All right? Now, it turns out, yes, in fact, this is normal and the formulas for the mean and standard deviation are given on the AP exam, um, the formula sheet. The mean of this is going to be equal to P. The standard deviation of P hat is going to be the square root of PQ over N. So in this case, I've got the square root of uh, P, which was my, my proportion, 0.3, Q, which is 0.7, and n, which how many were in each of my samples were 100. So then I calculate that out and I get my standard deviation, 
which uh, I did not calculate out. So let me grab a calculator. 0 0.04, 0 0.046, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0.04, all right, so there's my standard deviation, and there's my, so now, now see how this does not really match up with what I have here, right? Um, these look like they're 0 0.05, well, I guess it is, it does match up, 0.046 is point, duh, Mr. My is 0.046 is 0 0.05, so if I add 0 0.05, I get 0.35, and so forth. So now I've got a normal model, which means that, you know, if I rounded this up to 0.05, that between, you know, I don't really have this even in the center here, do I? Let's, uh, let's throw this guy in the center here, okay? Between one standard deviation, what's the empirical rule? 68%, right? So 68% of the population, 68% are going to be, 68% of those samples that I get, right, because these are samples, 68% of those samples are going to have awesome percentages between 25% of the people are awesome and 35% of the people are awesome in those samples. Two standard deviations away from the mean, 95%, right? 95% of those samples of 100 people have awesome percentages of 20% of those people being awesome to 40% of those people being awesome, all right? So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a sampling distribution of proportions. And I just wanna, I just wanna end this with saying that proportions go with categorical variables, okay? I know it seems weird, well, we're doing a lot of this math is quantitative, but proportions, remember, we started each of those samples, the question that we were asking was, are you awesome? They're gonna say, yes, I am awesome, or no, I'm not awesome, right? So that's all we have. We have awesome or not awesome, that's categorical. So then we, get, we create a proportion, which is the statistic that we're gonna use to find our sampling distribution, okay? So there you go, guys, sampling distributions and a sample. Boo! Boo! Huh, just kidding, guys, sorry about that. Um, I wanted to follow up real quick before you left this video um, about those conditions that I wrote up on that board just a second ago. Those conditions are for whether or not the normal model can be used for that sampling distribution. So just a sampling distribution by itself you can do, um, but those conditions are allowing you to build those piles up to show that you can in fact use a normal model to uh, to to explain and to model that sampling distribution okay so um see you guys later and um i hope i scared you bye